Oh yeah, man. No, I totally, I, I totally know who Dow and Jones are. Oh, oh you know what? My, my friends are here. I gotta go. Uh, I'll talk to you later. Bye bye. Hello! So happy to see you as always. Uh, my name is Dr. Evan Esquire. Happy to see you. I'm with Science Explorers as always and also still not a doctor. But today I want to talk about something that I'm a bit of an expert with and that is bubbles. I don't know who the man I'd be today would be without bubbles. Uh, you know, they're, they're a big part of who I am and what I love. So I want to share with you what I know about bubbles. Bubbles are a lot of fun, but sometimes some bubbles are better than others. Now, I'm sure a lot of you as well have tried making bubbles with just soap and water at home, and uh, we've all been uh, very disappointed by them. So today I want to talk about what makes a good bubble, bad bubble, and show you how to make the best bubbles. Let's work with what we have right here. Now, not all of us have you know, store-bought bubble solution at home that they can have a blast with. And also, I think it's a little more fun to make your own stuff. So, today we're going to make some bubble solution, but first we need to know the science behind it before we do that. A bubble is air trapped inside of a liquid. A bubble looks a lot like this. Probably better than how I drew it. We have a sphere of liquid with air trapped inside of it. But the liquid is actually sorted into three layers. Now we know that we need soap and water to make bubbles, but the soap and the water in a bubble like to separate, and that's how bubbles form. You have a layer of soap on the outside, and you have a layer of water underneath that. Then you have another layer of soap. So any bubble will go soap, water, soap. That's the liquid part of your bubble. Now the reason a bubble will pop is when the two layers of soap touch each other, that's your bubble popping. So what you have to think about is how can we make our bubbles as strong as possible? And that means making that layer of water that's in between your layers of soap as strong as possible, as yeah. thick as possible. I uh, think about if you had a castle, you wanted the castle to have like, you know, good walls to it. So we're making our layer of water thicker. We're making it stronger. So let's get started with making our bubble solution. Now we know we're gonna need soap. And for this recipe, we're going to use two tablespoons. Now, I like this brand of soap. I'm not going to say it. I don't know what the legality behind all of that stuff is. But I'm going to use two, two tablespoons of, and we're going to add a cup of water, liquid soap. Now, I will say a lot of different brands work. Now, as we mentioned before, just soap and water doesn't make great bubbles. They pop too quickly, they're not weak. If you look at them wrong, they'll just pop. So what we need is a third ingredient. And what that third ingredient that I recommend is glycerin. Now glycerin is something that I put on my hands when they get too dry. But as you can see from how it pours, it moves really slow. It's a very thick, heavy liquid. And it's what a scientist would refer to as a viscous liquid. Now, a viscous liquid is a thick, heavy liquid that moves really slow, it's really heavy, it's very dense. And uh, think of, uh, you know, corn syrup, maple syrup, chocolate syrup, uh, cookie syrup, which isn't a thing, but it should be. So we have our glycerin. And what that thick, heavy liquid is gonna do is it's going to mix with the soap and the water and make everything a lot thicker, a lot heavier. And what's nice about that is that it will mix in with that layer of water and make those even thicker. I'm gonna use red chalk. And that glycerin, 
is just super power and it makes them super strong. That's how I think people refer to cars. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but also don't. Um, and for the record, I added two tablespoons of glycerin to this. So we have two tablespoons of dish soap and we have two tablespoons of glycerin and one cup of water. So I always do eight parts water, one part soap, one part glycerin. Also, if you don't have glycerin at home, uh, light corn syrup works just as well, but it makes sticky bubbles. So those can be outside bubbles only. And I don't need any angry emails about how sticky those bubbles are, but they do work very well. So we have our bubble solution and like my recipe for tomato bisque soup, uh, it's best if it sits overnight. If you let this bubble solution sit out overnight, it'll only get stronger. Everything gets to hang out and meld and you know get to know each other and then you have the best uh, bubble solution possible. But luckily I have some that I have made uh, previously. So you have your super strong bubble solution and I'll be honest, even though this bubble solution that we just made, even though it's not as strong as possible, this is still stronger than the stuff you can buy at stores. You leave it out overnight, you're cooking with gas, baby. And this is some good stuff right here. A lot of us might not have bubble solution at home, and if we don't have bubble solution, we definitely don't have wands. So I wanna show you a few different things that we can make bubble wands out of. So I like to take a pipe cleaner, and I like to make a little loop-de-loop. -loop. There we go. There's a little loopy guy right there. And that's a bubble wand. See, you can make a nice little bubble if you have a pipe cleaner. How you doing? All right. Also, if you don't have pipe cleaners, a good old styrofoam cup works great. There we go. Not too bad if I say so myself. And uh, also, if you have a plastic uh, water bottle, but if you dip that in there, yeah, you know, cut off the end of it. That's a good one. I thought that was going to take a couple tries, but I got it. All right. Now, this one doesn't work as well, but I know a lot of us are going through a lot of paper towels, so there's a good chance we have one of these guys sitting around. This makes a good bubble wand. Uh, now, if you don't just want to make little bubbles or medium bubbles, you can also make big bubbles. All this you'll need is about two feet of yarn and a straw. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take the straw with adult supervision, you're going to cut it in half and you're going to thread some yarn through both halves like you're making an ugly necklace. And instead of using it as an ugly necklace, what you'll do is you'll get the knot inside of the straw and this right here is your bubble wand. And this is how you make real big bubbles. But it often takes a couple tries, I will say. There we go, there's one try. There we go, that's two tries. I said a couple, should have said a few. Oop. Should have said more than a few. This is how you make big bubbles. This is your giant bubble yeah. wand and you can have a lot of fun with that. I hope that shows up nicely on camera because that's a nice looking bubble. Like two tablespoons of soap, two tablespoons of glycerin, and one cup of water. And then you'll have some excellent bubble solution right there. So I hope you enjoyed yeah. this lesson. I hope you know and love bubbles a little bit more. Uh, every day I love bubbles and I hope you just, you know, Get on board with all of that, and I would like to thank you for watching, and be sure to share with your friends. Uh, I hope you have a great weekend. Uh, I don't know when this video is going up, but, you know, weekends are nice. Uh, so, uh, don't forget to be kind to each other, and be sure to share the video, and uh, bye! I don't know where my goggles actually went.